Hey guys, it's Casey and welcome back for another Unreal tutorial. So today I want to do a quick tutorial on setting up, the. what we're going to set up is how we can set up footstep audio for our game, but kind of the bigger picture is the big tool that we are going to use are called anim notify or anima animation notifies. So let's just say we have a game and we have our character here, but while we're running, we're not getting audio. So the first thing that we would do here is we want to open up the animations itself because we want the animation to drive the audio. We don't want the audio just randomly happening. We want it to come from the animations. So there's a few different ways that we could get into the animations here. I'm simply just going to click on my character and I can see here on the right side, I can see the anim class and I can just hit this magnifying glass and you can see here it goes to it. Or if we actually opened up our blueprint, we could do the same thing if we went down to our mesh and right here we have our magnifying glass and we can just open it up. So with this open, I can now see my animations and stuff like that. And if we just look inside of our blueprint here, or our, um, our animation blueprint, I guess, we can see our run is being driven by this, and this is a blend. And this blend comes from a few different things here. And I believe there's actually one special thing we're gonna do. And you can see here on this left side, since this is coming from a blend, our walk is, and not just from a single animation, it's coming from three animations. You can see on the left side here, we have this notify trigger mode, and it's coming from the highest weighted animation. So that means whatever animation we're closest to, that's going to be the one that's actually going to be triggering our notifies here. So let's just go to our run animation, let's set that up. So you can see we have this third person run, so if I double click it, we are now inside of our third person run. And simply what we want to do is we want to see the spots where our foot touches the ground. So I'm going to fast forward, and you can see right here, we touch the ground. So what I'm gonna do is with this little spot selected, inside this notify section, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do add notify and I'm gonna add a new notify. Now we could just go straight to doing play sound and stuff like that, but I'll show you why we wanna actually do a notify here. And now I'm gonna do a new notify and I'm just gonna call it footstep. And now we're gonna go forward, find when the next foot hits the ground and there we go. And we're gonna do again, new notify, or no, we don't want to do a new notify here. Now when we do add notify, we should have footstep. Where is it? Skeleton notifies, there it is. So with this, we have to go down to skeleton notifies, and now we can see our previously created one called footstep. There we go, and I believe we are good, because that would be our left foot down. Yep, that looks good to me. So now we have, at the start of it, right foot's down, we play our sound, left foot goes down, we play our sound, and it's going to loop back around. So now what we have is we have a notifi notify set up called footstep. So if I go up to our blueprint up here in the top right and we go to our event graph, if you don't see your event graph here, it's on this left side, you can just double click it. Here now we can add some code. And if I right click and I type the name of that notify we just created, which was called footstep, we can add some code. So now every time that our animation hits this spot or this spot, it's gonna run this piece of code over in our blueprint. And if just like the complete simplest system that we could possibly have now is that we could just do play sound at location. Um, we can get our pawn's location. You can see here we have like our pawn object. We could just get actor location and then we could plug that in. And now every time our foot touches the ground at the location of our actor, or if we wanted to be more specific, we could get the bone location. So if we wanted to, we could get socket. Um, or we have to get the mesh, then get the socket location of the foot, but that's not too big of a deal. But in essence, the simplest way to do this, if we didn't want any kind of dynamic audio, this would be the simple code that we would add. However, most games aren't just you have one surface for the entire game and you just want your character to make the same like pitter patter noise every time he walks. You want some dynamicness. You want, is he walking on sand? Is he walking on grass? Is he walking inside like on wood or is it metal? Stuff like that. So what we can actually do here is what we're going to do is we are going to do some line traces off the feet. Now, kind of the unfortunate thing is that line traces, while they're not horribly unperformant, it can become cumbersome. And I'm working on a game currently where potentially there might be 70 to like 100 enemies in the game at one time that are alive. That can be really costly to where if any every enemy in the game is constantly doing line traces to check what audio they're playing. So you have to kind of, there's more creative solutions to it, and I would love to hear maybe some other people's solutions that they use instead of using um, line traces, because I think that's a very clear situation where you could probably find something creative to get the same result, but potentially much cheaper. So 
that's just some side note. But for our sake, especially if you maybe only have the players making this audio, or you're not having that many actors doing footstep audio at one time, it's really not a big deal at all. It's just when you get into like the high thresholds of actors, this can become potentially become unperformant. So what we want to do here is when our foot, when we hit this marker and we're saying our foot is touching the ground, we want to see what surface is underneath us. So what we want to do is we want to do a line trace and we'll keep it simple and we'll just do line trace by channel and we'll just do visibility. And what we will do is our start location is going to be the same actor location. And just to make this a little cleaner, we'll just copy paste this and move this over. And we'll do that as the start location. And then on the end location, we will just subtract off, let's just say 100 off of Z. And that will be our end. So we're just line tracing. I think this will be from the pelvis. Let's see, where is our origin? No, our origin is all the way down at our feet. So let's actually change that a little bit. Let's actually add to this just to make sure. I'm just gonna add like 25 to it at the start and then our end is gonna be way underneath. The reason being is that if we check um, with our capsule component or actually the origin of this actor, we can actually see, I think the origin of this actor might be on the ground or am I wrong? No, the origin of this actor is actually all the way up there. So we actually didn't need that. Um, I'm just gonna control Z that. So since our actor, the origin is all the way down there, we actually don't need to do that addition. That was actually a mistake. We want to ignore ourself. I think this will be fine for now. And what we want to do is we want to check if we hit something. And if we hit something, then what we want to do is we want to check what we hit. Whoops, what did I just hit there? Paste here, it's not what I wanted. We want to do break. And what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to check for the actual material here. So what we want to do is we want to set up physics materials. But there's a little bit of setup here. It's not too bad, but there's a little bit of setup. And what we want to do is we actually want to go into the project settings. And what physics materials are, and if we go to our physics tab here on the left side after opening up our project settings, if we scroll down, we see we get these physical surfaces. What we want to do, and you can see here it says you can have up to 62 custom surface types. Um, once you name each type, they will show up as a surface type in the physics material. So essentially what this allows us to do is this allows us to select any surface in our game, say a sandy surface or the, a wood floor inside of a house. And we can say, hey, you are wood. And we can do things with kind of that that uh, declaration that it is something. And what we're simply gonna do here is we'll just, we'll just do two. We'll just do, do sand and we'll do wood. And now if we just do save all, what we can do is we can add these surfaces now. And what we can do is we can do physics and we can do physics material. And all I did here is I right clicked and I did physics, physics material. We'll just do this base physics material class and we'll call one sand and then we'll make one more and physics, physics material, select the base class and we will do what did I say it was, it was wood. So now I'll just save all again. And now what we'll do is inside of sand, if we go into our surface type, hmm, this might be a little wonky. We might have to play the game once and then stop it and then will it be there? Hmm, let's see, let's open up the project settings one more time. This can be a little finicky to get it to pop up. I don't think we need to restart, but let's just uh, just make sure that's all dandy there. Then we'll save all. Now is it there? There we go. So I don't know why it does that. You might have to redo it twice. I'm not sure why. But here we can select our sand, and then we can go inside of our wood, and we can select wood. And now the cool thing is, is that we can actually like select our floor here. And we could do a physics material override on the surface, but oftentimes what you actually want to do is you actually have a material. And pretend that this material, we had this to be like our sandy landscape. What we would do then is we would open up our sandy landscape material, and on the left side, the very top thing is our physics material, and we can select sand. And then we could do the same thing. If we had a material for our wood floors, what we would simply do is we would go inside of our wood floor material and apply the wood physical surface to it and now the game knows that th that surface is declared as something so if we open back up our animation blueprint which I closed we go back in there now what we have here is we have our physics material and I believe we might have to do one more thing here hmm I forget exactly what it is let's see here um let's see I don't think we can do select no the, hmm, this will be bad if I forget. We have to get one thing off of this. It is get surface type. There it is. I didn't forget it. So with this physics material, we have to do get surface type. And this is going to be an enum of all of our surface types. And an easy way to use this is if we use select now, you can see here that we can select any of our sand, our wood, or any of the ones that we had here. So what we can do here now 
is we can take this return value of our select. Selects are really cool. Um, there's many kinds of selects, but here we're just basically saying with this enum, we know we have default sand and wood. And now if we plug this into our play sound, it changes these pins to now be sound files. So with our sand, if we had like our sandy footsteps, we could select it. And with our wood, if we had our wood footsteps, we could select it. Obviously I'm just selecting random ones here. And now while we walk, we are going to run this code and we're going to see what surface we're hitting and we're going to play that sound. I'm going to add a breakpoint so we can see real quick how this works. And right when I play, if I start walking, that is a little annoying. Why is that not running? I can hear it playing. You guys might not be able to hear that playing because I have the audio muted, but that is playing. That's weird. So I'm actually going to pull this up. I don't know why that's not triggering the breakpoint, but it is playing. So I can hit play. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this to our character instance. And while I'm running, there it goes. Now it triggered it. So it triggered it. And it said, what is the surface type? Well, I made that ground sand. So with sand, we're now going to play this Fire Sparks 01. That's just how that works. And that's pretty cool. That it, it's really simple to set up. It's not too complicated. And if you're reusing materials, just vague, like this is a wood floor material, it's really easy to set up. We just need to go in into our materials and set up that physics. So I guess we'll hit on one other thing here. And a lot of times you don't want the same audio file playing, right? Like inside that, um, inside the animation blueprint, we were just playing that one sound file always when we, when we walked on sand. What we can actually do is if we make a sound and we make a new sound cue, what we'll call this is we'll call this sand footsteps. Foot steps, there we go. Spelling. And what we can actually do here is we can actually drag in a lot of audio files. I'm just gonna search for whatever audio files the default projects have. And I'm just going to drag in a few things here. Like we'll just drag in these four things. Pretend that these are four different footstep sounds for our sand. Maybe just slight variations, maybe slightly louder, maybe it's slightly longer, stuff like that. What we can actually do is we can use a node called random. And inside these sound cues, we can just make it randomly select one of these sound files when it plays. So now what we would do is inside the, the animation blueprint where we said what our sound file to play was, is we can now just use the sound footsteps file and it will randomly select one of these any amount of sound files that we have. So that's how we can get our variation. And while we're walking, we're not just playing that same sound file over and over. We're playing different ones at random. So that's it for us, guys. Um, I guess in closing, animation notifies are really useful. They can be used for very many things, and oftentimes it's when you want animations to drive some type of logic in, in your game. In this case, it was when does the foot hit the ground. There can be other cases. Say you have a reloading animation. What I would probably do is I would probably put near the end of my, uh, my reload animation a notify to go back to the character to say, hey, we finished reloading. Because that's like a really simple way of knowing, well, when did we finish reloading? You just link it inside of the animation. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, maybe when punching, when when do you actually want that damage to occur on the punch? Well, just add an anim notify near the end of the punch, right? So it, it just, anim notifies are really useful for when you want the animations to drive code. And as we did it there, super simple. We added the one anim notify. I guess we'll go back into it one more time and just recap it. Let's just select our character, go in there. And all it was is inside that animation, we, we just right clicked, we did add a new notify, and then once we had that one notify made, we could reselect it for other notifies. And then inside of our code, all we did was right click and type in the name of the notify, and then we can call it, and then there we go, we just run our code off of it. So that'll be it for this tutorial, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.